Well, a warm welcome to everyone to this webinar covering analysis of cavitation effects on pump performance. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Paul Lethbridge, and I'm the Director of Product and Solutions Marketing here at SimScale, and I will be your host today. Today's presenter is Ajit Jayakuma, a senior application engineer with SimScale. Ajit has a background in aeronautical and aerospace engineering and holds a master's degree in computational engineering from Ruhr University, Buku. So let's take a look at the agenda for today's webinar. So over the next 30 minutes, we'll start with a brief introduction to cavitation, why it's important. Then we'll get into a live CFD demo of a centrifugal pump. And we'll wrap up at the end with a five minute Q&A session and also some next steps, or your next steps to try SimScale yourselves. Please feel free to use the chat panel uh, to say hi and introduce yourself. And also feel free to ask questions using the question panel. And what we'll do is we'll try and answer some of them during the webinar, but the main thing is we'll come back to that, those questions in the Q&A session at the end. And a final reminder that uh, your microphones will remain on mute during the presentation. So let's get into the introduction to cavitation. Cavitation is the formation of bubbles or cavities in a liquid when the local pressure falls below the liquid's vapor pressure. And when the pressure rises, those bubbles collapse and create localized shock waves. And cavitation is pretty common in pumps, hydraulic turbines, marine pro propeller applications. And you might wonder why, why, why should we care? Why is it important? Well, we, we should care about it, and it is important because these shock waves can cause damage, erosion to parts, they can generate noise, vibration, and, over, and, and can basically reduce your pump's performance, reduce the flow rate. SimScale uses a constant gas mass fraction model. This is you know, how we simulate it. And the cavitation results are available as a total gas volume fraction, and you can plot those results as a 3D field variables you can see on the right hand side of the slide there the color contours so the simulation can be used to guide your early stage product design and development to avoid or minimize the effects of cavitation and Ajit will now explain this in more detail with the live demo over to you Ajit yep. thanks a lot Paul for the brief introduction on the cavitation once again, welcome everyone to this webinar. And uh, in the next few minutes, we'll be taking a look at a live demo of a centrifugal pump. And the way we are going to do this is to uh, break down the effects of cavitation and then see two significant cases and how CFD can actually help you predict cavitation and also uh, make design decisions based on your improvements to the pump itself. So on the right, you can also, also see uh, the image of uh, a pump with a flow and uh, the eye of the impeller, you can also see the cavitation, but in the next um, few minutes, you will see where, how, where it happens and how we can actually predict these kind of uh, um, effects using CFD analysis. The case setup looks like this. It's a simple case setup with a centrifugal pump. We have an inlet um, and we have the impellers rotating at a specific speed. And also we have an outlet which is connected to the discharge. So. The physics that um, is running in the background is totally turbulent flow and also incompressible. And apart from this, um, when you have any questions, as uh, my colleague Paul mentioned, you, you can actually use the question sections, write your questions there. We'll try to answer it at the end of this webinar. And if not, we will also get back to you over email for uh, questions that we are not able to answer within the time limit here. Yeah. So without uh, any delay, let's quickly jump onto the live demo. So to do that, I'm going to uh, access my SimScale account. And people who are really um, the first time looking at SimScale, SimScale is a cloud native platform. Um, the, um, the way we work in the background is that you don't need any hardware requirements to run high fidelity simulations. And all you need is a simple web browser and an internet connection to run all these simulations. So as you can see on my screen, I'm inside a browser and I have simscale.com and my credentials are logged in. And once when you're inside SimScale and from your dashboard, you can create new projects or select one of the existing projects and then start working on top of it. 
So that's what we're going to do here. So we are within the project scene and um, the first thing to, that you see on the screen is the results section of SimScale. So once when you have your simulation um, run, and then you can also post-process the results. So this is what we meant from um, the cloud native simulation tool where you can do an end-to-end -end simulation processing starting from CAD upload, pre-processing, setting up the boundary conditions, and also taking a look at the results. So everything is done within the same browser. Let's quickly jump on to the meat of this session. So cavitation. So as Paul mentioned, uh, cavitation is something that is um, related to fluid flow and it happens mostly on pumps, propellers, and also valves sometimes on that sense. And this totally depends upon the um, a few factors that you can imagine. So in a pump, you can actually imagine um, variables like the shape of the pump that actually significantly affects the cavitation occurrence and also the flow conditions that's gonna actually bring in the pressure difference which will create cavitation if it goes below the vapor pressure of the fluid used. And here, what we have is two major causes of cavitation. So you can actually put that into two sections. So on the left, you can see right now we are looking at suction cavitation. And what this means is that when you have um, really low pressure at the inlet or the suction section of your centrifugal pump, then the fluid actually reaches a low pressure below the vapor pressure and then it creates bubbles, which actually, um, and then the bubble actually um, creates a shock wave when it goes to the high pressure region. So this is the effect we are going to take a look at now. and. After this one, we'll also take a look at the discharge cavitation, which is another significant phenomena that causes cavitation. So we'll talk about it later in, in the stages. So right now, as you mentioned, we have a centrifugal pump case. And on the screen, you see the fluid volume of the pump itself. If I put that into translucent, you could see there's an impeller at the center and we have inlet and outlet on the other side. Yep. So when you, when you talk about cavitation in pumps, there are a few regions where you usually expect cavitation to happen. And when you uh, focus on the suction cavitation, it's mainly because of the low pressure at the inlet. And this kind of cavitation affects um, a lot of uh, regions near the impeller or the eye of the impeller. So uh, one way to check that is to actually slice your model and see how the cavitation looks like. So let me create a slide and then move it a little bit near the impeller. This will give you a good amount of insight about how uh, the cavitation or where the cavitation usually occur in a pump. So right now we are looking at the velocity magnitude. This is again, um, some of the additional results that you get, get from this sim uh, simulation. But what we're interested today here is to check the total gas volume fraction. As Paul mentioned, um, we use a constant gas mass, mass fraction in the simulation and depending upon the pressure gradients that is happening inside the pump flow, um, we actually expand the bubble or even um, contract the bubble. And that's how we actually measure the regions where the cavitation happens. And when you plot the total gas mass fraction, you'll be able to actually see certain regions in blue and red color. And what that means is quickly on the legend side, at the minimum amount of gas mass fraction is represented by blue volume and the maximum is represented uh, by the red uh, colored regions. And in reality, what this means is that when you have a region where you have high gas volume ma mass fraction, then there are there is a high chance of cavitation being happening uh, over those regions. So you can definitely see that um, when the flow comes and hits the leading edge of the impeller, you get an acceleration in the flow on one side as the impeller actually rotates in clockwise direction according to the screen. And that's why we get a low pressure area on that side. And if this pressure particularly goes below the vapor pressure of uh, the fluid used, here we are using water. So if it goes be below the vapor pressure of water, there's a high chance that cavitation is uh, created in these things. And the aftermath of uh, this cavitation is already discussed like, uh, you will get a lot of vibrations in your pump. You will get a lot of noise in your pump and also erosion to the impeller blades or even the housing in certain intensive uh, ca cavitation effects, right? All right, so um, for this case, 
let's imagine we are a designer. So we got this pump. Uh, the client actually gave us this pump and he, uh, they are telling us that there is a lot of noise in the pump and there might be some reasons of gravitation. So one way to actually troubleshoot what, what's happening within this pump system is to take a look at the uh, cavitation effects, just like what we are doing here. And if you want to see um, in a 3D sense where these regions actually are present in the pump, there's an interesting um, post-processing that you can do. So instead of slicing the model, you can also create an ISO volume and say that I want all the regions from 0.5 to 1 of the total gas volume fraction, which means um, 50, more than 50 percentage of the fluid region is enclosed with air bubbles. So there's a high chance that cavitation is going to occur in those regions. And if you turn that on, you will be able to see um, the regions in a 3D sense here. Let me quickly change the transparency to get a better view. And here, yeah. So as we already talked about, so with the suction cavitation, mostly the eye of the impeller is affected. And as the suction pressure actually is different, so in terms of cavitation, we usually use a term called NPSH, which means uh, the um, net pressure uh, at the suction head. And if this is below the required, then cavitation happens here. And as we actually reduce, keep on reducing the inlet total pressure, then this cavitation might expand and go to the leading edges, which will also affect the uh, leading edge of the impeller as well, and also some parts of the volute. Uh, that's what we are going to see here. So right now we have a case where the cavitation occurs only at the eye. And also you can see there is a slight bit of cavitation at the discharge or the outlet of the pump. And um, the reason behind this is, actually the shape of the impeller as well. So one of the major causes of cavitation can also be the shape of the piping system that you use at the suction as well as at the outlet of your um, centrifugal pump. So here, due, since we have a sharp bend right next to the outlet, and this creates an acceleration in the flow and creates a low pressure region here at this particular section. And this can be avoided if we can actually modify the outlet section of your uh, centrifugal pump and uh, try to actually do some variations of your geometry and check if your cavitation goes down on that side. And especially on these what if scenarios, simulation comes into play where you don't have to actually build up a test, ra uh, test rig, you don't have to build up a piping system and test that intensively, but you can simply run a simulation with a different geometry and see if it can reduce the cavitation that is occurring. And as you mentioned, so the suction cavitation happens as we bring down the as uh, the total pressure at the inlet. So that's what we have done as a troubleshooting uh, way here. So right now we have about like minus 3.4 meters of water head at the inlet. And as we keep on reducing this total inlet, you can definitely see that the cavitation effects increase. So I'm going to switch over to a, a much lower total pressure at the inlet. This will give you a good amount of insight about like how the cavitation propagates if we keep on reducing the inlet total pressure. And as it loads, um, SimScale is a cloud native tool and it also comes with a, a certain um, differentiators from the traditional tool. So when you're working with SimScale, if you have any questions, you don't need to actually send a screenshot or you don't need to actually um, write an email with a huge uh, description and things like that. You can simply use our chat, which is in platform, where you can send us a message and say that, hey, I'm working on this particular cavitation uh, uh, issue, and uh, can you please help me set up the current boundary conditions to make sure it is close to reality? So um, th that sort of questions can be asked directly over the chat, and we'll be happy to jump in the chat almost instantaneously and then answer you then and there specifically. Yep. Great, now that we have the results of the um, suction cavitation on the worst case, where we have a very, very much lower uh, total pressure at the inlet. So you can already see when you make the range a little bit more, you'll be able to see that the cavitation is starting to propagate to the end of the uh, impeller blades. So, um, this, will, this is what uh, 
is going to actually cause the erosion or pitting effects on the impeller. And even if you go further below, if the suction is not enough, I mean, if the pump is actually um, thirsty of water, that's what I say, and then the cavitation might affect your housing as well after propagating. Yeah. Great, this is one such causes where the cavitation occurs. And um, we can also quickly take a look at another cause where we call that as discharge cavitation. And by discharge cavitation, it actually means that there is some kind of blockage at the discharge or the outlet of the pump. And, and due to that, there's going to be a huge recirculation in the uh, pump itself, and this might also cause cavitation. So let me quickly jump onto one of the cases where we can see that clearly. And as it loads, as you mentioned, the suction cavitation happens at the far right end of your pump curve. So if you have like high velocity at the inlet, and this is going to cause the suction cavitation. On the other hand, the discharge cavitation happens at really low flow rate at the inlet. And if you have kind of a clogged outlet or if your uh, piping system is really complex and it's not allowing a free flow of uh, fluid at the outlet, this might cause the discharge cavitation. And here, the effects of cavitation are a little bit in on the intensive side when compared to the suction cavitation. And this is because um, there's uh, a few more phenomena happening inside the pump. So if you take a look at the effect of cavitation, you can see that directly propagates to the entire section of the impeller and also sometimes go until the inlet as well. So these are the effects for discharge cavitation. And uh, to check this, you can quickly do a cutting plane and see how, it, how the velocity actually looks like near the impeller. So you'll be already noticing that this is not the ideal uh, velocity plot that you need for a centrifugal pump. You can already see uh, a lot of recirculations happening here. And uh, this is why a lot of bubbles, air bubbles are actually trapped within the volute where the impeller is placed. And this causes the increase in cavitation. So this is one of the other reasons where um, the cavitation happens. And using CFD, not only you can see a specific case, but if you have a case with cavitation, you can actually see how to reduce the cavitation. So one such way is to actually see at different flow rates how the flow looks like. So this will give you a good idea about like whether the pump is operating at a particular um, flow rate condition or within the pump curve itself. In some cases, there might be friction losses, there might be uh, clogging of outlet that, that actually changes the performance curve of the actual pump. So in those cases, you can run multiple uh, flow rate analysis just as a pump curve. So all, the, all you need to do is like actually input the flow rates in a CSV file and then start the simulations in parallel. And this is another advantage of using um, a cloud-based simulation tool. So right now I'll quickly show you what I did here on the workflow, just to give you a quick overview of what you need for the simulation to work. So as we mentioned, we start with a 3D CAD model. So when, when you have the 3D geometry, you have the pump case and the rotating region. And from that point on, you can simply go ahead and create a simulation. And we encourage user to use the subsonic module, which is especially created for these kind of rotating missionary analysis, which is um, fast, accurate, and also robust uh, in terms of like uh, running simulations with different flow conditions. Yeah, we'll go ahead and create a simulation. And now we have selected the geometry. Let's go for design one of the centrifugal pump. And all you need to do is set up the materials. So in our case, it's going to be water and select the fluid region here on the right. On the boundary conditions as well, we have um, a velocity inlet, for example. We have a flow rate inlet. And we say that this phase is going to act as an inlet. For example, let's give 11 liters per second for a starting point, and then for the outlet, we give a pressure outlet. Yeah. And the next thing you need to do is to set the rotating conditions. So you select the rotating zone that you have. So once when we set the rotating zone, 
you will um, you're almost done with the setup so uh, your flow conditions are set your rotating conditions are set you can go ahead and give a specific rotating value for the impeller and set the axis of the impeller as well yeah once when these things are done you're ready to start a simulation so you can go ahead start a simulation start the run and what's really important in this um, case that most of the pump designers or manufacturers they try to actually iterate over the designs on the impeller or the housing or volume and when you have like two or three different configurations that you want to check you can quickly do that by swapping the geometry so uh, right now we have one run which is running with design one so in order to run a simulation on design two all you need to do is duplicate the entire setup go to the geometry and then simply swap the design that you are uh, focusing on right now and by doing so you are already preserving all the uh, simulation conditions and you can start a run on the design too as well and now we are running two different designs uh, with uh, uh, the same set of boundary conditions and by the end of like five to ten minutes you'll get the results of both where you can compare and see which design performs better so this is a general overview of setting up a simulation within SimScale and um, the way that you can actually include cavitation is that when you are setting up a simulation you do have the cavitation model at the top end of a simulation tree and here you can go ahead and say that i need cavitation and then save that you might have to select the material properties again from this and then start a new simulation with cavitation on so this is all you need to do so to bring in cavitation you just need to toggle the switch for the cavitation model and there's nothing else on the simulation setup that needs to be focused here all right i hope this gave you a clear uh, idea about where simulation can help uh, preventing or identifying cavitation and um, this can also be put to together into like three use cases which might be helpful for uh, people who are approaching cavitation using simulations so let me quickly jump on to the slide deck and here we can see three major use cases that you can think of um, when uh, um, simulating cavitation using pump uh, for the pumps right the use case one is a general use case where um, it is focused on the design of the pump itself so when you are designing a new pump when you are designing a new impeller you need to make sure it works within the range of the pump so this is something you can do uh, using the simulation instead of running like uh, 10 to 15 different flow rate conditions using a test rig you can simply start all the simulations uh, in parallel and then find out where the pump can cavitate where the pump actually um, goes out of the NPSH conditions that are required and things like this can be easily done and usually the simulation takes with the subsonic module about like 10 to 15 minutes per run and in parallel runs you can actually get the pump curve within 15 minutes so you will get all the results individually as well and also you can get 3d insights since you're running a 3d simulation yeah and the second use case is a little bit on the customization of the pump installation as, uh, itself so when you have a um, company which actually um, modifies the inlet section or the outlet section or installation of the pump you get the pump from the manufacturer and then uh, it does have the performance curve already stated in the technical specification sheet but it, it is not necessary that it, it's going to work the same way when you install the pump in a different environment or different uh, piping system so this is something which SimScale can also uh, help you with so if you have a pump then you can actually play with the inlet and outlet sections uh, according to the requirements to see where the pump can actually fit in or what at what position from the tank level or the discharge level the pump actually performs better or also run into cavitation so these kind of analysis can be done um, using SimScale and the final use case is about maintenance and troubleshooting so uh, whenever you have pumps which are running for years then uh, you run into all these cavitation or noise issues and things like that this is also something um, which can be contributed by the simulations that you can do so you can take the existing setup of the pump with the piping and also the impeller uh, roughness and things like that and then run a simulation to find out why uh, these kind of effects are happening 
and, and then use these insights to actually prevent um, these kind of adverse effects on the pump. Great. Um, this is the overall summary of um, the cavitation model within SimScale and how CFT can help uh, predicting or avoiding uh, cavitation. But um, I'll leave the desk open to questions and um, I'm sure that we have a lot of questions. Paul, uh, I'll hand it over to you for that and uh, I'll be also happy to answer any questions that comes in. Ajit, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so let's move into the Q&A session. We have about five minutes left in the session. We've had a couple of great questions come in on the question panel and a few, I got a few on the chat as well. So Ajit, I'm just gonna pick a few and um, uh, see, uh, see how much time we have here. So the first one is, uh, is it possible to establish NPSH3 of a pump using SimScale? I think you've touched on that, but go right ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, that's one of the main requirements when uh, for most of the pump manufacturers, and um, you can actually run a bifurcation simulation and see where your NPSH uh, lies for your created design or your new models, and then this will give you a good idea about like um, where what is the operating range of the pump. So that's definitely possible, and even with the entire pump curve creation you're gonna get the results for the entire pump curve within like 15 minutes. So you can quickly make decisions on base, based on that, yeah. Thanks, Ajit. Uh, another question, an initial assumption is incompressible flow, but compressible vapor is present. Can compressible flow be initially assumed? And if so, would the results be different? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So right now, how SimScale um, performs cavitation simulation is that we have a constant gas mass fraction already in the water or the fluid that you simulate. So in terms of compressibility, we do have compressible solver that can run, but there is no phase change which can be actually affected here in the simulation. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pick one from the chat that came in to me. Um, yeah, so uh, yes, we mentioned that you know, it, it can be run in parallel. What's, uh, I mean, how many cores can be can be applied to the solution? That's again a good question. So SimScale provides uh, to the professional users up to 96 cores of uh, simulation for each instance that you start. So you can start like 10 different simulations, each on 96 cores of um, processors. Uh, thank you, Ajit. And uh, one question, well, then we're time for one more question, then we'll move on. Uh, Oh, there's a few questions coming in. Uh, okay, so let's do this one from Lorenzo. Can you show blade loading or static pressure on the blade surface? Yes, that's definitely possible. So since we focus much on cavitation, we didn't get into those kind of results, but uh, with the fluid pressure, you can actually plot that on the surfaces of blades to actually find out a lot more insights, yes. Excellent. And, um, uh, I think we have one more, we'll get one more question in. Can you model the actual erosion of the impeller or propeller? Mm -hmm. That's again a great question. So uh, with the cavitation model that SimScale has, you'll be able to actually figure out the regions where um, much of the cavitation occurs. And this gen generally corresponds to the areas where the corrosion or uh, the erosion of metal parts or impeller housing happens. So this is, something we can give the insights about, but we don't do explicit erosion modeling. Jit, thanks again for answering the questions. Okay, um, we've got a few other questions that we haven't got time to get to. We will answer them uh, directly uh, by email after the uh, webinar. Let's just move on to the last uh, slide of the presentation which is really just the next step. So, you know, I want to thank you again, Ajit, and I and our attendees. I hope that you all found that the webinar was you know, was, was valuable and that you're all you're pretty keen to start using uh, SimScale and try it for yourself. So on screen, you can see uh, some instructions, some links uh, as to how you can sign up for SimScale. Uh, just go to worldwidewebsimscale.com slash sign up. Um, or just go simscale.com, it's pretty obvious where you can hit, hit the button to try. Um, you can also request a demo 
uh, a one-to-one -one demo by contacting us directly at sales at simscanner.com. And basically an application engineer will be back in touch with you within 24 hours. And also we will be sending a recorded version of this webinar um, to all participants. So if you've got colleagues that couldn't make it or you want to share it with some colleagues that missed it, uh, there will be a link in your inbox uh, shortly. So with that, uh, thank you all very much for attending and uh, we'll see you again in another SimScale webinar in the not too distant future. Thanks everyone, see you in the next one.